my mother, um, 70 years old, uh, and she has osteoporosis or a very okay. early stage. And so you've mentioned how, you know, how prevalent this is and, and, and how good creatine is for the bone. Correct. So let's, yeah, let's explore so that. I, yeah. It's an area that we by accident, so to speak, it wasn't designed to look at. And then there was a cellular study done about two decades ago where they sort of incubated osteoblast cells or the cells that are involved mm. in bone formation with creatine. And they, they sort of got energized and they proliferated and the activity uh, got substantially better. So that sort of gave a little bit of lineage to say, well, if the osteoblast cells are more energized in the presence of creatine, could that cause an increase in bone strength and potentially bone mineral density? And it, uh, in combination with studies in Brazil and here in Canada, we sort of have a, a, a picture painted that we're semi-confident on some of the things. So for example, creatine without exercise will have no bone benefits. So this is really critical. Okay. For your mom yes. watching, she needs to exercise and hopefully she's doing that anyway. But if mm -hmm. a, a female or an older male was to take creatine, we're not seeing any good data to suggest that the bone will respond without mechanical stimuli from exercise. Then we've actually looked at it in combination with exercise in two populations, postmenopausal females, and then you have healthy older males. The best results seem to be in postmenopausal females and creatine in combination with resistance training, three days a week, uh, not daunting, but three days a week for up to a year, has been shown to reduce the rate of bone mineral density loss in the hip. And we think the hip is clinically significant because oh, yeah. falling on icy roads, if you suffer a hip fracture, you need surgery and then you come inactive. And then even in healthy populations, including males and, and healthy postmenopausal females, creatine in combination with resistance training actually increased bone surface and size. So therefore, you may be able to withstand a fall and not suffer a fracture. And in our latest study, which took almost a decade, I probably started with hair and now I have no hair left. Um, we looked at two years of postmenopausal females, a large sample over 200. But this is where the dose got a little interesting. In our previous study, we gave about 10 grams a day, or sorry, about 8 grams a day, 0 0.1 gram per kilogram. And we thought, well, we didn't see any improvement in lean tissue, uh, very minimal in strength. Maybe they need more. It's similar to what we think of with protein. Maybe older adults need more. So in this big clinical trial, we gave 0.14 gram per kilogram. So if you go on the scale and you're 70 kilograms, you're taking about eight and a half, uh, what is that? About well, 10 grams of creatine per day. So on average, across all individuals, that was about 11 grams of creatine monohydrate every day for two straight years. So mm. it was the longest trial to combine the two. And it did improve or creatine improved measures of bone geometry, specifically around that hip region again. So mm. at the end of the day, we have some data to suggest specifically in, in postmenopausal females that the skeleton is maybe getting stronger it might mm -hmm. be able to withstand more falls or fractures a little bit better. Um, exercise needs to be there. And we think without exercise, creatine will probably have no uh, effect. It won't improve bone mineral density. In other words, it won't increase it, but at least it'll help attenuate the rate of loss. So I think for any female listening, all the studies have been in postmenopausal females primarily. I would love to do a study in young females. Maybe we can build up the bone in those peak height velocity years, get the bone super strong and, and, and large. And then when the rate of aging starts to occur after the fourth or fifth decade, maybe the rate of loss will be attenuated. And so those mm. are the areas we're starting to look at. So for example, if your, if your mom is taking creatine now for maybe the, the cognitive benefits, she might not have even expected any bone benefits, but there is some data to suggest it might preserve the integrity of the skeleton. All right. So we're going to up her dose when I go there in Australia. I'm just going to up the dose of both of them. <laughs> yeah. So the, 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 that begs a question. What about a dosing strategy? Maybe you're saying, yeah. you know, eight to 10 grams has all that's been shown. Could five work? We don't know because mm. we've never tested it. But the theory mm. here is if the majority go to your muscle, you kind of might need a little bit more trickling in. And now this begs an even better question. Well, we've talked about brain. We've talked about bone. We've talked about muscle. What's the dose that might hit all those areas? And when you average out the dosages, uh, according to science right now, it's about 10 grams a day. Mm -hmm. 20 for the brain, 10 or so for the bone, and maybe three or four uh, for the muscle. When you average it out, it's about 10. 
But most people say, that's too high of a dose for me. I just want to get it through my diet or, or take three grams a day. I, I would imagine over time, if you're taking this in weeks and weeks on end, it'll accumulate and trickle in. So I'm okay if you're taking three to five grams a day. My hope is that with exercise over time, it will accumulate into some positive effects. But some dosing studies need to be done. We've done a study in young adults, 10 and 20 grams, and there was no difference, but no benefits. So we're not really sure um, the effects.